Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Joe. For many types of games, whether multiple player, FPS, or 2D platform, it's desirable to present the player with a list of levels they can play. To access different levels, we will need to unlock different maps. The map button will let players select which maps they want to play. Each map will contain their own level. Today we'll have a look at how to create a map selection in Unit. We will cover the UI settings, level selections, and how to save and delete the data in unit. All resources are now available on the description box, so feel free and check them out for yourself. Additional, in order to save your time, I have prepared one project with a complete UI on my Google Drive. If you want to skip the UI settings, you can start from that project. Okay, let's get started. So just open up Unity Hub and create one 2D project. The resources folder can be downloaded from the description box. So first thing first, we are going to drag two folders into our project. To create a UI canvas, simply right-click anywhere in the hierarchy, go to UI, and select the canvas. On the canvas settings, canvas scaler, the UI scale mode is set to scale with screen size. As a default, I always choose 1920 plus 1080. In order to change the background color applied it to the screen, we can go to main camera, select solid color to choose the dark color. Since map selection and each individual level selection will stay in the same scene, let's create one UI panel. All of the map selection elements will be created under this panel. Later, if you want to switch between the map selection and each individual level selection, we can simply use GameObject.SetActive to control them easily. Don't forget to drag his color alpha channel to zero and rename it. We call him Map Panel. Under the Map Panel, let's create another UI panel called Map Selection Panel. This panel will contain four UI map groups. Change the alpha channel to 0. Since we are going to make the map image, we create one UI image and drag the level 1 background image to his source image. Press the preserve aspects, which can ensure image remains existing dimension. You can drag the handles or the edges of the rectangle to resize it around a specified element. In order to lay out four maps in a regular pattern, using grid layout group component can place its child layout elements in a grid. Select the map selection panel game object. Add the grid layout group component. You will notice that the map image is smaller than his previous size because the cell size controls his width and height. The cell size determines the size to use for each layout element in the group. We can manually change the values according to your background size. Then select the child alignment option and choose to the middle center. Making sure you have select the map 01 game object and press the Ctrl or Command D on keyboard to duplicate our map 01. Now, four map images have automatically laid out in a regular pattern. In order to display much standard, we can change his spacing and padding variables. Perfect. Now we can first delete the rest of the map images. Once we complete our first map, we can duplicate several times and save your time. Now, we are going to make the first individual map. There are two status of the map button, locked map and unlock map. Let's first make the locked map. Create a new image UI component as a child of the map game object. This UI image can be anchored to the left of the parent. Resize the UI image, select the lock sprite and set the sprite mode to multiple in the texture import inspector if this image has several elements. Here, we choose automatic slicing. The editor will attempt to guess the boundary of sprite elements by transparency. 
Then drag the log image to the UI image source slot. Create a new panel UI component. This UI panel can be anchored to the right of the parent. Set the color to transparency. Under this UI panel, we can create one UI image to represent one star image. Using the same methods to slice another image. After dragging the middle star to the UI image source slot, set this star image on the top of his parent panel. Under this UI image, Create a new text UI component which will dynamically display the required star number on this map. Under the right panel, create another UI image and drag the corresponding star to his source image. I set his anchor to the bottom of the parent. Also, create one UI text to display our current star's number and the total star's number in this map. For example, if there are three levels in our first map, the text should be displayed looks like 0 slash 9. Each level will provide three stars. In order to control easily, you can create an empty game object. Click on the Anchor Preset button and choose the Stretch Horizontally and the Vertically option. Drag the group of the log image and the right panel under this empty game object. We can name this empty game object as Locked Panel. Create another empty game object called Unlocked Panel. Click on the Anchor Preset button and choose the Stretch Horizontally and Vertically option again. We are going to make the Unlock Status disable our Locked Panel Game object first. Create one UI image to represent the star image. It is anchored to the lower left corner of the parent. Under this UI image, Create a UI text to display the current map star's result. In order to see clearly, select all of the UI text game objects, set their color to white color, and add the outline component. The outline component adds the simple outline effect to text component. You can manually change the width and its color of the outline on here. Close the locked and unlock panel. Select the Map01 game object and press the Command or Control D on keyboard to duplicate our Map01. Each map has different background image. All of the map information will be controlled by c -sharp script so that we don't have to worry about now. Additional, we can create one UI image game object and one UI text game object to display our current stars number. Okay, we have almost complete our map selection panel. The next step is to create our individual level selection panel. Each map has its own level selection panel. So we are going to make four level selection panels. But don't worry, we just make only one and duplicate others. Select the UI canvas, right click in the hierarchy and select the UI panel. 
This is our map one level selection panel. Drag the background image to his source image. Create another UI panel and resize it. This panel will control all of the level buttons in the map 1. Now let's create first level button. Each level button has two status. One is locked status. Another status is unlocked. Drag the orange circle to this UI image source. Press the preserve aspect and resize it. Here, I name this game object as 1, because later in C -sharp script, this name will easy for us to save the data by using player press. Under this game object, create one UI image and drag the log image to this position. Then, Create three stars images. Each star image will anchor to the lower left corner, bottom, and the lower right corner of the parent. Now, if the level is unlocked, it should look like this. If this level is locked, we shall hide these three stars images. Select the panel, add the grid layout group component. The size did not display as well as expected. Set the cell size value to 400 plus 400. You can try to duplicate the level button game object and change the spacing and the padding. Set the child alignment option to middle center. Then we can delete several level buttons because we only want to create three levels. Rename each game object to represent the order of the level. Actually, we want the child alignment start from the upper left corner. You can manually change the spacing and the padding again in the inspector. Finally, we can create one UI image as the bank button image. Set his anchor to the upper right corner of the canvas. For each individual level selection, the first level button should be unlocked by default. OK, we have complete the map 1 level selection page. Now select this game object and press the command or control D on keyboard to duplicate. When we press each level button, we are going to play this level. In this episode, we can simply create one thing. In each level scene, there are four buttons. Each button will return 
one result to our player. Select all of the UI image, add the button component, press the transition options and choose to the sprite swap, which allows different sprites to display depending on what states the button currently in. Okay, that's all we need to do before coding. As I mentioned before, I have uploaded the current project to my Google Drive. You can download the project and skip the UI settings. Or you can follow this episode and understand deeply how to set up the UI elements in Maps Selection. Okay, let's create one c -sharp script called Map Selection. Each map game object will be attached one Map Selection script. This script will control the different status of the map. Go to Visual Studio. We have one Boolean variable that is called its unlock. The default value of this variable is false. Then create one new game object called Lock Game Object to hold a group of the lock UI elements. Also create another game object called unlock game object to hold a group of the unlock UI elements. We have defined one method called update map status. If the value of the unlock variable is equal to true, which means our current map is unlocked and we can play this level. Inside the body of the if statement, when the map is unlocked, we want the unlock game object display on the screen while the lock game object UI elements disappear on the screen. We can use game object dot set active to achieve. All of game objects under this unlock game object may be inactive because a parent is not active now. This is the reason why I create an empty game object as a parent of this UI elements. In else statements, if the value of the is unlock variable is equal to false, which means this map is still locked now and not available for us. We can simply copy and paste this block and change the boolean values. Hold the command or control button and select four map game objects. Add the map selection script. Drag the corresponding game object to the slots. Also, don't forget to call this method. For convenience, this method will be called inside the update methods. Although we don't want this script called each frame, let's first put these methods inside here and mark the command. We will remove later. When we press play, we can select each map game object and manually change its unlock value. Our map game object will display different status depending on these Boolean variables. Now let's create another c -sharp script called UI Manager. This script will keep track of the player's star's number and control the transition between map selection and level selection. Inside the script, the first public is one game object that is called map selection panel. Then we have another public game object variable that is called level selection panels. Since there are four level selection panels in this game, 
we use array to store a collection of the same type game object together. We use one public integer type variables that is called stars. So this integer type number will actually track down how many stars do we have. That's all we need to do in the UI manager now. Back to map slashing script. Each map has one unique variable to represent the required stars number in this map. If our current stars number is greater than the required stars number, we can unlock this map and play their levels. So we have one integer variable that is called quest number or required number. And then we have created two variables called star level and n level. These two variables will be used to calculate the total stars number in the next episode. We have defined another method called update map. If our current stars number is greater than the quest number in this map, we can unlock this map. In other words, once our stars number is greater than the quest number, the boolean variable is equal to be true. Else, if the stars number is smaller than the quest number, this boolean variable is to be false. So, how to access of stars variable from another script in unit? The most common method is using find object of type, which returns the object that matches the specified type. Later, we will implement the singleton pattern to make public variables global accessible. Finally, call these methods inside the update methods. Back to Unity, select map game object. We need to edit the public variable in the inspector. Since this is the first map, the quest number should be 0 by default. The level index starts from 1 and the end level is 2. In other words, there are two levels in our map 1. In the second map, we can set the quest number to 5, which means if we want to play the second map, we have to receive at least 5 stars. And the level starts from 3 and end in 5. There are 3 levels in map 2. Also, don't forget to change the game object name to 3, 4, 5. This name must be changed in order to save the data easily in the next episode. For the third map, we can set the quest number to 12. The level starts from 6 and end in 9. There are 4 levels on map 3. In the fourth map, we can set the quest number to 24. The level starts from 10 to 13. Select the UI canvas. The UI manager script has attached to the UI canvas. Drag the map panel and the level selection panels to their corresponding slot. After setting up, when we are in play mode, we can simply change the stars number to check the result. Cool. Alright, this is the end of this video. In the next episode, we will continue this project and make it complete. We will connect the map selection with the level selection. Also, we will cover how to use the player press, store or access player preferences between game sessions. Stay tuned for future updates from my channel. For more videos about Unity tutorials, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, and game design, you can click my profile and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.